Hello to everybody. This is again Luke Thomas uh, speaking about nail tumors and this podcast will be focused on unpigmented tumors of the nail unit. It has been shown in many studies and uh, in our study published several years ago that very advanced cases of squamous cell carcinoma of the nail unit are still observed nowadays but it is unfortunate since it's possible to make an earlier diagnosis. This is also a squamous cell carcinoma and we will see that uh, dermoscopy can help to make a very early diagnosis of this tumor. It is very important to know that uh, to have a precise diagnosis, histopathological diagnosis of an unpigmented nail tumor uh, it is important to make a biopsy of the nail matrix but we all know that this process is very painful and will produce in many cases a definitive scar on the nail so the help of dermoscopy is also to avoid unnecessary surgery in some patients like in this case of onychopapilloma then can be left untreated in some cases Let's look at the symptoms first. Many of these symptoms are already known from previous work in the onycology work or known from dermoscopy. We will look at some of these features now. Known from onycology is the fact that a change in a nail plate or a tumor that changes uh, the shape of the nail plate is in favor of a malignant tumor. Like in this second case, the presence of a deformity of the lunula is also in favor of a tumor of the nail matrix. Change in the shape of the nail plate with the presence of a convex deformity of the nail plate is in favor of a tumor usually slowly growing uh, from the nail bed whereas when you see an erosion either partial or a total erosion of uh, the nail plate this is very highly in favor of a malignant tumor and it is very unfortunate that the symptoms is very often neglected by the clinicians it is not normal to lose some parts of the nail plate or the complete nail plate uh, and uh, to suspect the diagnosis of onychomycosis. This, the first diagnosis to be suspected in such cases is a malignant tumor and in the case shown here the, uh, the diagnosis of melanoma has to be suspected. From dermoscopy we know that uh, hairpin vessels like seen in this image are in favor of a squamous cell carcinoma that atypical vessels with pigmentation like seen in this case are also in favor of uh, a malignant tumor in that case malignant melanoma uh, atypical vessels can be seen in malignant tumor in this case of squamous cell carcinoma and uh, atypical vessels plus remnants of pigmentation are in favor of a melanotic melanoma like in this case Linear microhemorrhages also suggest the possibility of the presence of a tumor in the nail matrix. Indeed, it's not a complete coverage of the nail plate by the linear microhemorrhages, but when the phenomenon is localized, like in this case, uh, one should strongly be aware of the possibility of uh, an epithelial tumor of the nail matrix in the area where these microhemorrhages are seen. This is seen in onychomatricoma, in squamous cell carcinoma, and of course also in malignant melanoma, but usually it's not limited to a small spot in that case of malignant melanoma. Erythronychia is a common symptom very often it's not in favor of a malignant tumor and it is seen in many conditions in many cases the erythronychia goes across the uh, lunula and uh, goes 
all along the uh, nail plate to the distal edge of the nail plate. This is very often uh, observed in hemangioma, in onychomatricoma, in glomusalgioma, in our experience, but in the literature, some cases of Bowen's disease and some cases of squamous cell carcinoma have also exhibited this feature of longitudinal erythronychia, but usually not isolated. Longitudinal loco or xanthonychia, very often with the presence of subungual hyperkeratosis localized to the area of the band, are in favor of a tumor of the nail matrix. This is uh, xanthonychia, and this is leuconychia with hyperkeratosis underneath the nail plate, localized uh, in the area of the band. This symptom is very much in favor of an epithelial tumor of the nail matrix, either squamous cell carcinoma or onychomatricoma, but it could be observed in other uh, conditions. Triangular distal onycholysis is also a symptom in favor of an epithelial tumor of the nail matrix. This is the uh, clinical and dermoscopical aspect. And this is observed in, in epithelial tumor of the nail matrix, like onychomatricoma and squamous cell carcinoma, but it's not uncommon to find this feature in glomus cell tumors. And uh, in that case, uh, it is not uh, accompanied by the uh, presence of uh, the uh, hyperkeratosis underneath the nail plate. Spots can be observed through the nail plate, could be red, yellow, or blue-purple. Red spots are in favor of malignant melanoma, and in some cases, cell carcinomas. Yellow spots, very well circumscribed, like it is in this case, are in favor of a subungual um, bone formation and purple spots are in favor of gl uh, glomusal tumors, but bluish spots are also observed in case of blue nevi. I come to the diagnosis chapter, and uh, the usual appearance of an amelanotic melanoma of the nail unit. Very often you observe multiple colors, disappearance of the lunula, and erosion of the nail plate. But uh, when we come to the dermoscopical symptoms, you can observe atypical vessels, remnants of pigmentation, and some linear microhemorrhages, like in that case. This erosion of the nail plate is also highly in favor of a malignant tumor. This is also malignant melanoma. You can see a red spot, but you can also observe in some, in some areas the presence of remnants of pigmentation and the presence of atypical vessels. These symptoms are known to be very much in favor of amelanotic melanoma. <clears throat> this is another case of amelanotic melanoma with atypical vessels and a blue veil uh, that can be considered as a, a sort of a remnant of pigmentation. And of course, clinically, you can see that there is a complete erosion of the nail plate. This patient has been treated for many years for an onychomycosis that was indeed not present. It was a typical case of malignant melanoma. This is again a very advanced case of amelanotic malignant melanoma with uh, atypical vessels and complete disappearance of the nail plate. Squamous cell carcinoma is characterized on the uh, dermoscopic point of view by the presence of longitudinal white or yellowish bands. These bands are very often associated with uh, hyperketosis underneath the nail plate. This is a typical case of squamous cell carcinoma with a white to yellow band and the presence of hyperketosis underneath the nail plate. 
This is another case with a yellowish band with the hyperkatosis that is uh, almost invisible in this image, but that you can imagine underneath the nail plate. This is again a squamous cell carcinoma with a yellowish band with polychromia and the presence of a red spot at the origin of the, uh, the lesion. And this is another case with linear microhemorrhages, polychromia, uh, presence of a white and yellow band, presence of a red spot, and uh, on the clinical point of view, the presence of a deformity of the lunula and hyperkartosis underneath the nail plate. Onychomatricoma shares the same symptoms with squamous cell carcinoma. The only difference is the sharp uh, delimitation of the tumor. You can see in this case of onychomatricoma that the lesion is sharply demarcated from the normal uninvolved nail plate. You can see that uh, you, you observed uh, leukonychia, longitudinal hemorrhages, but the sharp delimitation of the lesion is in favor of a more benign process like uh, onychomatricoma. This is again a case of onychomatricoma. Subunguo gromos ultima is usually painful, and this is the main clinical symptom. On the dermoscopical point of view, you can observe the purple blue spots and some deformity of the nail plate. This is a typical case of a gromos ultima of the proximal nail bed, but you can observe that uh, on the distal part of the nail plate, there is some triangular erosion of the, of the plate. This is also a typical glomus ultima of the nail plate with a convex deformity of the plate on the clinical image. Subbunqual hemangioma is a very common disease and uh, it is usually only associated with longitudinal erythronychia, but uh, some microhemorrhages can be observed also. So this is a typical case of sub uh hemangioma. Blue nevi of the nail unit are a very rare condition. It is usually clinically visible with this blue spot underneath the nail plate that doesn't change over time. And in our view, since this disease is extremely rare, the uh, histopathological examination of a nail biopsy is mandatory. Subungual exostosis is often uh, on dermoscopy characterized by the presence of a very well circumscribed yellow spot. This is a typical image of this very well circumscribed yellow spot and the x-ray confirms the diagnosis of exostosis. Anyhow, in case of doubt, when the presence of a sub nail tumor, it is necessary to make a surgical exploration of the nail bed and an excision of the tumor. I come to my conclusions. Dermoscopy gives interesting information on unpigmented sub tumor syndrome, but pathology remains the gold standard in doubtful cases. I would like to thank my co-workers and I thank you very much all of you for your attention. Goodbye.